hello, 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 and welcome back to It's All Good. I'm your host, Latavia, and we are back for another episode. And this time I am joined by friends of the podcast, two of my good, good girlfriends, um, Anna and Nikki. If you have been listening at all, you have seen or heard from them at least two or three times since this podcast has started, um, but they are back to join me. So ladies, welcome and thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. It's all good to thank get together. You. Yeah. Yes. So um, I know that I just saw you guys like a little over a month ago, but it feels like it's been forever still. Um, mm-hmm. So thanks for, th- I'm, you know, well, okay, we're here because we have to, I would say discuss, debrief and pay homage too insecure as that's the way I feel right now um but so I don't want to like delay for that but before we get into that um I do want to ask you all if you could share something someone that you are grateful for um either today or in the last few days so I will let you all go first Anna Nikki you guys choose who goes first uh Nikki go ahead and take it (laughs) Ah, um, okay. So what am I grateful for? So many things, so many things. Um, this morning, my affirmation was about being thankful for your body. And so I am very thankful for, for my body. And so I want to definitely uplift that since it was my morning affirmation. But also, like, I'm just thankful for God. I ain't even going to flex. I ain't even going to lie. I ain't even going to play the way he's been doing for me in this past year. I'm not going to cry. I'm not gonna cry if you need to it's okay because you know it don't take much it'll be my third one of the day and i'm really trying to limit them you know to two a day so but whoo god is good and i ain't talking about what i heard i'm talking about what i know that's that's so i'm well, great amen i'm so grateful okay. all righty then <laughs> a little tough to follow up there uh, <laughs> i'm gonna say that I am thankful, uh, for one, of course, for the people in my life. Uh, it's just good to have a village for my son and a village for myself because though it takes a village to raise a child, everyone needs one. And I'm thankful for my plants. Um, I've been taking care of house plants for about like three years or so, and they have, for the most part, continue to thrive some died but you know really thank you it really just makes me feel good to be able to tend to something and to have the instant gratification of a new leaf like some sort of growth and it just also reminds me that you know we all have like our ugly brown patches on our leaves you can just (laughs) cut them off water yourself and keep going come on I, I think you followed up just fine. I think, you know, oh. we, we're just going to have us a little mini preaching session here. But no, that, that's great. Because that's that's a great little metaphor for life. Thank we have you. our moments. We cut it out and we keep it moving. Um, hmm. So now y'all want me to follow those. Okay, great. Uh, hmm. Let me see. But I, I, there are so many things. Um aside from just have, being grateful, you know, to see you all and have you all here so we can talk about this wonderful thing. I'll say I'm grateful for Insecure. I am grateful for that show. Um, but one of the reasons I'm grateful for it is because how it has been a reflection of real life and real friendships. And as Kelly says, growth. Um, so I am thankful for growth and the process. Yes. <laughs> the process of growth um, that I'm seeing in my life as well as those of the ones in my village. So yes, gratitude all around. Um, And so I guess with that, you know, let's get into what we are here for today. Um, So for anybody watching or listening, if you have not seen the season, the series finale of Insecure or anything related to Insecure, just spoiler alert right now, because I'm so sorry for you if you have not, I do encourage you to go ahead and watch 
the entire series if you haven't or if it's the last season either way I encourage you to watch it so with that being said ladies what I guess just to kind of kick it off what is kind of the first thing that comes to mind when you think about the series finale of the show give me some more (laughs) I definitely was left feeling like I wanted more but there was no way they could have written the end of that show and me not feel that way but ideally I just wanted more like I'm having a hard time coming to grips with the fact that it's even ending Mm -hmm. I have fought the urge to rewatch it every day this week (laughs) oh I'm sure I will oh I I will I it's just I was like let me just let me marinate and process my feelings (laughs) Um, from the first one so yes what about you Nikki repeat the question for me I have an answer but I I just want to make sure that my answer is it actually answers the call of the question oh lord you just made me feel like I was back in Barbara (laughs) um sorry I had a moment um when you think about the terror the terror (laughs) I don't want to go back. Um, no, when you think about what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about the series finale? First thing that comes to mind is the soundtrack. Cause my girl, okay, listen, let me, okay, cause you, but listen, the way in which Glock Peaceful, can, Glock Peaceful, Glock Peaceful. Black peaceful. <laughs> very rarely am I introduced to music. Very rarely. Like very rarely do people put me on to something new. So when people put me on to a song or put me on, didn't put me on to the artist, because I already knew the artist. Um, but to have Yeah, but distance. Ooh, yeah, but distance. That, that, that one. Mm, yes. <laughs> It's so beautiful. And then to close, though, with the good sis Kali. To... Because, listen, because when we started with Insecure and Bossy, I remember the scene, I remember the song, and I, I remember where Khalees was. I remember where Khalees was and who Khalees was at the time. And, and now, Khalees now. And, 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 So that mm-hmm. no yes it's I, I got it and I feel like the word to me of what you were saying was like completion full circle was what I was feeling and thinking and watching it in terms of just how they the attention to detail the attention to detail um, come on and I feel like you know they've always been careful and intentional about that And I would say too, and some of this I'm saying, taking kind of from watching the documentary that they did and being able to hear from the directors, writers, producers about kind of the evolution of the show. Um, But as I was watching the finale, it was, y'all took y'all time. Like you were, you made sure, especially because throughout this last season, each week I was kind of like, eh okay, that was a good moment. And what is this? It's like, I wasn't, it wasn't giving all of the things that I was hoping or wanting, but, and then it was like, okay, we only got one more left. How how you going to do this? It was like fourth quarter for real. We got two minutes left on the clock. We down by, by 10. How you going to do this? And then it was like, oh, buzzer beater and just walk away like it was on some Sanaa Lathan and Love and Basketball like I'm gonna just hold it I'm gonna just I'm gonna just I'm gonna just hold it play and for that's your heart kind of, play for your heart play for your heart and they did which and is they kind got of me. raggedy but like we're not gonna talk about that because that's your whole uh, right let us not go into Love and Basketball yeah, right not. and the problematic things that it is mm-hmm. although I was you know <gasps> I was already playing basketball but it made me want to play even more but anywho um <laughs> I wanted my love and basketball story 
but anywho um but no that was just like I said for me the finale because there was just so many things you mentioned the soundtrack which throughout the whole show but definitely like there were like you said there are songs or artists that you were aware of but for me it was like hearing the song in the context in which they put it in gave me a whole different understanding and appreciation for the music like specifically um like you said bossy but the yeba's distance i knew who yeba was i had literally just watched her tiny desk like a week before and i heard it but then hearing it in that scene with Issa and Lawrence, it was just like. Shout out to Yeba. Um, her voice. Also, is great performance on Lucky Days EP. It takes two. How much can her heart take? I just want to. Yes. I also want to shout out Lucky Day for being brave enough to release that because Yeba like came through and massacred. And it takes a and very her, strong person. Yes, it and takes let a her very, start the song. Yes, it. It takes a very strong person to still release that, knowing that Yeba like grabbed your neck like that and 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 choked you. But it's okay because he, he held still his did. own. He held his own. He did. Oh yeah, lucky day always. It's not a question. Yeah. It's not a question. But yeah, it's. But I and then I add child to Yeba. Yeah. Speaking of which, I, last night, um, it's a little old, but NPR did a tiny desk like an insecure one, and so they had three of the artists. Um, Apparently they had done one last year. I missed that. Well, yeah, I don't know. Who that was? Anna, Tmar, and BK something. I can't forget. I can't Are remember. Are you the serious? And I didn't one. know about Tmar. We got to find that. We did. Yeah, That's what I'm um, saying. Literally, she said Tmar, and you saw how close I got to the screen. <laughs> did you see how I came in? What was it? Um. Wow. What was I? Time doing? off. The girl BK something, but it's time off. We can't take no time off is the is the name of the song. But yeah, so I watched that last night and they did it in um in the uh one of the coffee shops that Issa is a co-owner of and I think has been featured in the show. So yeah, definitely check that. It's an NPR, like one of the at home tiny desk concerts. I think they it's, it's a phenomenal a series. I have really enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah, so okay. We could go on and on about this music, but um, well, since I have you right now, Nikki, we just going to jump into it. One of the, I would say of this last season, one of the early moments that had everybody talk. As a matter of fact, I think it was the first episode, first or second episode, um, when they had their reunion, they went back to Stanford and, um, you know, people had gotten in their, I don't even want to say in their feelings um folks was clutching pearls and uh a lot of debates about the character about tiffany's character her attire and you know just kind of what that meant the disrespect and if you don't know what i'm talking about in the show tiffany and molly are members of alpha kappa alpha sorority incorporated this was established, I want to say like first season, second season. First season, um, very, it was first season. So, and there've been references to it throughout, but I will say, I feel like in this, <laughs> in this episode, it was the most blatant um, <laughs> call or display of the membership in the sorority. And, you know, I'm in a sorority. But Nikki, you you are. Um, I'm in, in the sorority. Yes, yes, yes. yes, we're yes, not, yes what, yes, what we're not going to yes. do here today yes. is that. But I'm gonna give you a moment to address how, like, I know how I felt seeing it. Um, but I, I would like to hear from you as a you member. Felt, I want to know how you felt because, and I say that because, like, I know I'm going to be coming from a place of clearly like personal bias. So. I want to first know how you felt. Um, to be, I was like, okay. no, yeah, sure. So when I was, you know, and Anna, we're talking about, you know, that episode uh, with Tiffany. But honestly, the first time, like the first outfit where it was just all pink and green, it just, I'm watching, I'm like, oh, cl- okay. we She's naked. Okay, clearly. This is, that's obvious. It's 
and then but to me it was the the, the way the out the colors of the outfit as well as just the style of it it was to me it fit it fit tiffany's character in terms of like the personality that we've come you know we've come to know of tiffany so it was kind of like oh okay all right i see what y'all doing but then it was also i assumed this was some type of a homecoming so since, since they were going back to stanford so to me it just kind of made sense because i'm one that you will catch me in colors quicker than you will see me in letters just because that's more often than not i will always have one some your it's not um it is very un, it is not surprising to see me in royal blue or white um but when then she had on the cardigan it was like okay we're really doing this and i was i was honestly i was a bit surprised that they had the shield um, or that she had that cardigan with the letters and the shield, just because I know that's not something we typically see in television or movies, unless the actor themselves is a member, like, um, what is his name? Uh, Ghost from Power. I can't think of his name right now. His Steve real Harvey name. also. And then Steve, Steve Harvey's Harvey. Harvey. The emblem. Yeah. And his, so uh, yeah, that's a better one. Steve Harvey and Cedric the Entertainer. Um, because in the Steve Harvey show, Steve Harvey actually he had a know, whole shield. After, right. And now, before I was Greek, I didn't know. But now that I'm, you know, but ever since that I now see the show, he has an entire shield. Right. So he has it. And then Cedric Entertainer is also a member, is, is a Kappa. And so he would have letters or the cane. Um, and I even remember back, uh, what was it, Moesha, uh, her dad, Frank, he... I didn't know it at the time, but he's actually a member. He's actually a Kappa. And so he would have the cane, but he never, if I remember correctly, he never actually said the letters, but it's a, usually because of licensing, all those things. And, you know, my, the trademark licensing world. Right, like my right, 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 there, right. Like, like, So it was just like, a, oh, wow, that's different. But immediately is they must've gotten clearance. Yes. They got clearance because you wouldn't, go this far and then it was also for me it was like well her and molly are in the same sorority why isn't molly wearing something but then it was also tiffany is known to be a bit extra so it's not surprising that she is wearing more plus i have rationalized you know tiffany probably still active molly's like mm, i ain't got time for that <laughs> I'm, I'm financial but i'm not Which active like right. that. exactly exactly but that was that was kind of where i would so it was like i saw it and kind of to me it was this is a distraction from what I'm really trying to find out about the show what's going on with Molly and Issa that was where my mind was but then so I wasn't so I was surprised and not surprised at the outrage by people specifically people who are not in Greek letter organizations but yeah that's that's my take so I'll give like full disclaimer. I I don't know how like the situation culminated. Like I don't know what the end result was because after it kind of happened, like I really still wanted to enjoy Insecure. And so I just like personally like disengaged from it, from that particular mm -hmm. part of it because I didn't want it to ruin what I thought um, was a really important moment in the culture. Mm-hmm yeah you know I, I didn't want to I got me on that you know, full disclaimer I am a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated um and it was um I, I had the same reaction that you had initially I saw the shield and I said oh they must have gotten permission and in my in my heart I was like oh that's so great that like they understood the value of the culture and they went and got permission. I was expecting the sorority to put out a statement. Like we were so happy to work with and, and license, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I, and I thought that if that had happened, what a great moment, you know, for the culture, what a great validation for the culture. Also coming from an IP background, you know, for those who know me in my real life, that had to have happened because there's no way you can do that without getting that clearance because it's a whole because it ain't like they're not gonna they're gonna know <laughs> right it's a whole registered <laughs> trademark and it's all on hbo like i assumed hbo cut the check that's that's what i assumed and i was very 
before knowing what had gone on. Very excited that HBO had cut that check because there is a whole like movement in intellectual property about social justice and making sure that you know black IP holders get their just due, IP holders of color, et cetera. It's a whole thing. There's a whole organization dedicated specifically to that. So shout out to Kim Kignor. Um, so I just really thought that that what had happened. And that's I, from what I had heard. And the reason why I say from what I had heard, because after I totally disengaged, like when I heard that that was not the case, I just disengaged because I wanted to still really enjoy Insecure. Um, but it was a hard moment for me. I ain't even going to flex because it took, it, it brings up a lot of questions, right? It brings up, because back to your original point of the amount of backlash that I heard from non-Greeks who were just, I mean, straight up talking stone cold, just crap about well, it's not really that serious and I don't understand, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, it may not be that serious for you. It may not, but as a person who like did not, in full disclosure, I'm a grad chapter member. So like being grad chapter, I had to wait a very long time. So I spent a lot of time, you know, being um, not, not, not fully understanding what, what all went into being a member of a divine nine organization. And so I felt like a lot of the comments came from just, you know, not really knowing everything that we put in to be members of Divine Nine organizations, active or non-active. You know, we can, there, there are lots of conversations that we can have within, within our Divine Nine in PHC, but outside of that, like active, non-active, it's a lot that goes into it. It's a lot that is pledged to it, pledged to that shield. That shield means a lot. That shield is very sacred to a lot of people. And so um, it hurt. I knew I can't, I cannot. When I, when it came out, it hurt. You can call me sensitive. I'm a cancer. I don't care. It hurt. It hurt because it was kind of one of those things of like where outside of it, I, but I honestly, I don't lay anything at the feet of the show. I actually lay it at the feet of the attorneys who work for HBO because whether or not they knew, whether or not you knew, all of that, none of that matters. All that matters is like basic black letter law. Certain things are required of certain um, legal entities and Alpha, Kappa Alpha, Sorority Incorporated is a legal entity. And so the attorneys at the very least should have done their just due. And that's always been the place that I've kind of been in. And was like, I'm not about to attack Easta. I'm not about to attack um, Amanda Seals. And I'm surely not about to attack Elon Orgy. I'm not about to attack anybody who just showed up that day and did what their job required. That is that is not who I have beef with at all. I don't even have beef because y'all know I don't even do beef like that. Um, it's just more so of like the attorneys that do the back end work, that do the double checking and, and all of that, it's a registered trademark, my guy. Like it's a registered trademark. And there are certain, um, there, there are remedies that are specifically available to you when you, and requirements that are required when you do your due diligence of registering your federal trademark. And so that's kind of where I, where I stand with it and why I was able to still enjoy the show because that's you know where I put where I put my you know I guess my 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 beef or whatever I just feel like the attorney should have done better and um, I don't know how it worked out I don't know the resolve and honestly I don't care because the reason why I say I don't care not that I don't care about my organization that I don't care about NPHC being respected ultimately I don't care because they got nothing to do with me so I, I leave that to the people to the attorneys that are now addressing the issue and whatever resolve they come to I just have to you know have faith in whatever that that resolve is which is why I give it to God and I don't I don't care um but I will say I, I do hope that any show entertainment entity from this point forward takes it very seriously because it's a it's woo, it's a no. serious matter it's a serious <laughs> matter and so I hope everybody from this point on takes it takes it seriously I I, I agree but before I say anything Anna did you what were your thoughts on 
And I think you and I talked about it kind of like in the moment, but just like, what were your thoughts on the episode and then like the, the backlash and all that stuff? Uh, for those of you guys, you know, I'm the GDI of this group. Um, but a lot of the women in my life are, um, are Greek. So I do understand the significance of the crest of the shield of the letters. Like my mother is um, a Delta and like, even though, you know, you wear your mom's shirts, you know, around the house and stuff. And it was never to wear any of her, you know, nail you ever, even if I wasn't going to leave the house, it was never that. So I do understand the importance of the people who wear the, um, you know, the colors, the letters, the crest to actually be members of that organization. So I did understand that. Um, I just assumed like y'all did that they must have gotten that clear or else they would have came up with a fake one like they didn't stomp the yard. Like that's what I just assumed. I didn't think much of it. I was like, oh, okay, then you know, they got it cleared. And they really, honestly, the first time I didn't even see the crest, I saw the letters, but I think on the other side of the cardigan was the mm -hmm. crest and I didn't even see that until it was uh, like freeze framed for me. Um, but so I didn't really think too much of that. Cause like I said, I assumed they got the clearance. I was a little taken aback by the fact that I felt like this was the first time we knew that they went to Stanford. You know, Stanford, as far as I'm concerned, is an Ivy League school. And now my background is going to an HBCU. And anyone who does that knows we holler about our school all day, every day. Like, it's not like um, to know me, to have worked with me. It's not to know where I went to school, for sure. And it's something that we're very proud of. And I don't necessarily see that with people who went um, to PWIs as much. Um, but I definitely had to think twice about like, did we know that they went to Stanford? Cause I feel like this is a big deal. Um, any person that I know, and I really only know about three people who went to Stanford, they more than casually mention it for the most part. <laughs> um, like, you know, they reflect back on their time at Stanford. And I just feel like I, I was, I was looking for that. So in that episode, I wasn't necessarily taking it back by the Greek part, I was taken aback by the fact that we're just finding out that she went to a West Coast Ivy. And to me, that explained a little bit more her frustrations with Lawrence in the first season. Because, I mean, he has the skills, he's a computer person, he's working on his app, and he has already has this um, educational background of excellence. Why haven't you been achieving as much? Where at first I was like, she kind of get off his back a little bit, you know, just graduating from college, working on his app a little bit. But when you add like that, um, that Stanford portion to it, I think for me, it made more sense as to why she was so exasperated the way she was. But yeah, I didn't know anything. I didn't know about them going to Stanford. Did y'all know that? So I'm glad you have brought that up on it as you always do bringing up the stuff that need to be talked about because you always do that. You always do that, girl, because I did not know it. Well, I, I did not know. I knew they went to school together. The only, I would say, I think it was either the wind down or the documentary where Issa talked about that. And I guess she said it was something about a prop mistake in the early on in the show that I missed. Apparently there was some kind of mug or something in an episode I guess the first season or something that included Stanford and she was saying that's why they ended up being that they all went to Stanford because I until the episode I had no clue I knew Issa in real life went to Stanford I did not know that that was where the you know that's where they all that. met so it was like and I knew I said I know Issa Ray went to Stanford because I heard her talk about that and also she uh Jadena went to school with her there because he talked about how that was where they met and she had told him you know she would put him on and he was in that episode I think first or second season but I do think that's an interesting that's a very interesting point in terms of like the um school pride and I, I know very much how much of a proud Hampton graduate Anna is um I also I must say I am a I, graduate of the real HU though so let's since we're talking about it I can't I even throw shade I can't throw shade to Howard I wouldn't be here my parents met while they were both at Howard so I can't I wouldn't be here talking about, about it. So we'll see I mean I what I, I I ain't gonna go there because I did not go I went to North Carolina Central University 
Um, Mm -hmm. But aside from that, and I think what I was, Anna, you said, you know, most of the people you know, especially that if they went to an HBCU are very proud, you know it. Um, Not as much for PWIs. And what I can say is I feel like personally, as well as for Nikki, we do fall into a bit of an exception there because I know for a fact that she has a whole lot of school pride. And I know that I do as well, not just in where we went to. Yeah, you can see hers in the back. Um, But like pride in undergrad as well as where we went to law school. Um, And I rep both very hard now. There's a third one that you ain't probably ever gonna hear about it from me. (laughs) I mean, thank you, but yeah, whatever. The, the two you go hear about are Temple and North Carolina Central University. Um, but that was a big, and that's why I feel like that first episode, there were just so many things, but also not a lot. So it was just like, the only other thing I'll say about that in terms of that episode, the backlash that I was a bit annoyed by was that people were coming for Amanda Seals individually and the other people individually. And it's just yes. like, yeah. And acting like they didn't know that it had been established that they were members of this sorority already. Um, so that annoyed me. I did in some of the, I did kind of look into it a little bit after, to my knowledge, clearance was not, they did not get clearance ahead of time. Um, the other thing about it that shocked me is the showrunner, Prentice Penny, I believe is an alpha. And so... And one of his, he had, you know, put something out kind of defending Amanda of like, hey, it was my, you know, it was my decision. It was our decision. We want to highlight and we wanted to show, you know, essentially put, highlight them on this big platform, which I think that part is great. But what's missed, and Nikki, you touched on this, is you want to highlight. So you think it's important enough to highlight on this platform, but you did not, have the respect enough or hold it in regard enough to follow the same channels that you would have done, that you did for this music, that you did for anything else. And it's, especially knowing that he, as well as some of the other people affiliated with the show are in group letter organizations, you, I'm not even gonna say you should, you know that there is a process in place. And so that part did, that was disappointing, but like, kind of like you said, Nikki, I didn't want to, allow that to you know take away from my enjoyment of the show so I just chalked it up to y'all need to do better and I do hope that on the back end things are you know whether it be with the sorority and various legal representation that um, we need to cut something on the back end in terms of a licensing agreement for royalties because the show is going to continue to it's available people can stream it so there should be some type of revenue whether it be a lump sum or a percent percentage points on the back end um to the organization for the use of it because i also got an issue with whatever vendor it is that sold them <laughs> that material but like i said we I don't want to stay on that Cause like I said, the IP attorney in me has all kinds of questions and is looking for receipts that are not there. But once again, that's, that's not my area. But if anybody would have asked me, I would have let them know you need to contact headquarters and ask. They got a process, but. I also think that to me is a, is a testament to um, something that I, I am like fully embracing more so in this year of my life how your individual perspective, like your storytelling is not gonna be like anybody else's. We oftentimes hear that like, oh, you a black girl and you went to college, so your story has already been told. You know, like, oh, Issa already did that. And it's like, actually, no, because her experience, who she is and her life experiences as a black woman are not the same as mine as a black woman, same as yours, Latavia, same as yours, Anna. So your story always has um, a uniqueness and a specificness that needs to be told because it's your story. And so for me, it really overall just highlighted how we can quote unquote all be the same, but still very different. Black people are not a monolith. So like as soon as I made the connection that she went to Stanford, as soon as I um and, and, and I and I use that as kind of like a segue in some of the quote I haven't seen on my timeline but I've heard about like backlash about Issa Rae being from Stanford she went to an Ivy League she came from money 
you know, blah, 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 blah whatever. Like that doesn't take away from what she did. It doesn't take away from how hard it was for her because she's still a black woman and she still did that thing. So, okay. And, and what are you doing? What, right. in the words of Beyonce, don't just talk about what other people are doing. Don't just talk about <laughs> like, like, so I, but for me, it just highlighted like, you know, I am a member of, of, of Alpha, Kappa Alpha, it's already incorporated. I would, I would do it differently. I would do it differently. And so look at the space. It just really showed that I look at the space, you know, for you or for anybody else who wants to come and do it differently, talk about it differently, show it differently. And that's really kind of what I took away from it um, because all of our stories, our perspectives are different no matter how many times the powers that be when they tell you that they're all the same. I'm, I'm, was it two snaps, two clap, two snaps and a twist? Um, no, <laughs> no. And I also, I'm sorry, before we move on, I have to make sure I actually say I'm a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Since Miss Nikki wants to continuously repeat, I realize I said that I'm a member, but just, just for clarification, I'm a proud member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Okay, we can move on. Um, but three, so, okay, they met at Stanford. Now we know they went to Stanford and the friendships, the evolving, um, I'm not gonna lie. Initially, I was a little annoyed at the time hop that they did of specifically with Issa and Molly, especially just the way season four ended. <laughs> Molly was public enemy number one <laughs> all of last year. And so it was like the anticipation coming into the season of just like, what is that? Where are they with their friendship? And so it's like, in hindsight, I get it and I, I'm okay with it. But initially I was just like, hold, 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 hold up now. They, when did they make up? How did this happen? I need to see this because that was one thing, as much as I didn't like to see that they were going through it, that was to me, one of the realest things of the show in the sense of life happens, ish happens. and you're not always on the best of terms with your friends. Like I've gone through that personally and I was able, I was definitely able to resonate with like that fraction of like, hold up. Like, I love you. You're my friend. You're like my sister, but also I don't like you right now. Or I don't like how you're treating me and how this is going, but I'm fighting, you know, feeling like I've been in a situation where I felt like I was fighting harder. or I was the only one fighting to maintain the friendship or restore it. And it's not being reciprocated. And so I felt like that was definitely towards the end of season four. I felt like that was happening with Molly and Issa. And it was so it was just kind of like we saw it. And then the beginning of this season, it's kind of like you got they've got their awkward moments. But then we fast forward a year and we're back to, you know, Sunday fun days. <laughs> But like, just what did y'all, I guess, kind of what was you all's thought? And not just on, I guess, Molly and Issa's friendship, but just the group as a whole, like how they addressed the evolution of the friendship. I would say there's uh, two kind of things I walked away with um, in that regard. So, uh, of course, I wanted to actually see the pain and the struggle of like being in between. Like you have your fight and then you have your makeup and we don't often get to see what's in between. And so I did end up missing that. And I did end up kind of wanting more. But also on the other hand, like I feel like in that in between, most of what you really need is time. And that's what they gave was time um, just so that they could heal and get back one-on-one. -on -one. So I kind of understood doing that in both regards and also, there's so many storylines and so many things that they were going to have to kind of tie a, a ribbon on that I think this was probably the most efficient way to, to do that without you getting super bored or they do an entire episode. So we do get to see that middle part. All right, skip a year. Or, or they would just do episodes based on the people's relationships and how they progress. So every episode, like Kelly would have an episode episode and Tiffany would have an episode so I think the editors and the writers really did a nice job with letting us be uncomfortable as an audience also so we mm -hmm. felt 
being in the middle and how they um, alluded to it. One of my favorite things is when Kelly, uh, when Molly asked Kelly, like, was it Molly? I can't remember. Either Molly or Issa asked Kelly if, um, you know, how long did it take before you had to stop laughing? And Kelly was like, I still, I still fake laugh. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I think, that. I think it was Molly. Which is true. Like, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? No, no, I said it was Molly that had asked her that. Okay, so Molly asked, and it's, and it's true that there is a bit of fake it till you make it in a friendship that has gone awry and you guys are trying to get back to it. So um, I see kind of both sides of that as in I wanted more. And that's why I, said I started this uh, podcast off saying I wanted more, <laughs> um, but also understanding they had a job to do and they allowed real things to happen, which is for time to pass for them to really get right. And then it's also like, what would they have said in the middle? Would it just be a bunch of awkward dinners? Like, how would that, like, did we even really need to see that if they kind of already knew that Issa and Molly were the love story all along? The only thing I would even add, because Anna covered it so perfectly, is that in addition, I think she, is exactly right like the time is really it that's it that's that's really honestly all that really heals is that you just more stuff happens and I also think it was a great way to show how like life be happening and so you don't really have like those a lot of times you don't have those those converse those awkward dinners you know a lot of times it's just like girl I'm tired of being mad at you so like I need your advice I don't have time for this you know so and it'd be like that it'd be like that like you know I've had relationships fall come back whatever and a lot of times it's simply because I made the choice that I want that relationship more than anything else that's going on and I did see that on on Twitter as like a comment that like love is a choice to care is a choice and like sometimes and ultimately in the end her decision to her and Lawrence that was the choice like that was a choice that she made and um it's really that's really all it is like you know we we oftentimes try to make it so much more really it's just time and choices that's kind of what it boils down to and that's what they showed us in my opinion amen and amen yes um it's crazy because when you were saying it I kind of thought time heals all wounds and for so long I felt like that was a cliche and it is to an extent but it's also like I'm I'm learning cliches have were grown out of something true or something real um and they may have been reduced to a little quick saying but there's truth in it and there's even when it's uncomfortable um you know you know what is it the same truth hurts but it's still the truth and so it's just like you have to and for me I would say one of the things that's like the takeaway and for me in like my own life right now is just the process of it time is a part of the process and so although from a standpoint of them trying to resonate or communicate that to us they did the time hop you know like that lapse where we saw we got glimpses of the day in and day out but hey we don't have time to literally take you through all of that um but just accepting that you know it's uncomfortable and it takes time um and even in that like after they got to the point of you know they're they're back or they're better looking at even throughout the season of life happening you know Molly was definitely going through a lot of things like she was still going through her growth but then her mom got sick and what I appreciated was them showing what friendship in your 30s looks like um of like yes it would be great and I think Anna you and I were talking about this it'd be great if my friends lived in the same city as me or even the same um, state, because <laughs> in, in, in my case, that's not the case. Um, and even the ones in the same state, we're not always able to get together. And so it was just showing how in the midst of life happening, when it matters, showing up for your friends and being supportive. Um, and so I appreciate it seeing just that overall, the evolution of their friendship as they the, I guess the individual involvement and growth and how that translated into how they showed up as a friend, specifically Molly and Issa. Cause it's like, there were a lot of times I feel like in this season where 
Issa was showing up for Molly in ways that she didn't or just couldn't before. Um, and so it was like, I appreciated that, but. Oh, just speaking on like friendship in your thirties, I think they did a nice job kind of illustrating that and just having um, real conversations and real things happening. Like, you know, when you're in your thirties, unfortunately, you know, parents get sick, you know, um, you know, and uh, Lord forbid, but you know, a parent may pass or something like that. And you need someone kind of in your corner that allows you to, uh, you know, grieve properly and just to be able to be yourself, like to feel those negative feelings. And um, I just think they did a really good job of saying, of, um, of making sure you guys knew that these folks are not straight out of college, you know, that they are in their uh, early to mid thirties and they are truly adults at this point. I know I'm a believer that adolescence uh, lasts longer than 18. Um, everyone doesn't believe that, but you know, your brain doesn't really finish forming until you're 25 anyway. So um, to make it seem like these characters are more adults and less childlike, even though they did a nice job not really um, integrating any parents into it, um, we very rarely saw people's um, parents, so I thought that was dope too. Um, that all right, you know, now they are at a point where they are in their thirties. They're you know taking care of business, and part of that is being responsible for other people. We see Tiffany do that by having a child, and we see um, Molly and uh, ooh, I'm losing her name. I'm losing her name. Kelly. We see Molly and Kelly you know, making real decisions on how they want to live their life and, you know, doing the um, estate planning thing together. And even Molly just really sitting her parents down, like, look, you writing this uh, mini will in the back sheet uh, in, the, in the back pages of your Bible is not going to do it. And I just thought that was really good to, to just say like, all right, you know, these people are, it's not like, and folks can correct me if I'm wrong, like the cast of Friends or even Living Single, where you knew they were like in their 20s, maybe like late 20s. There's a, even though it's only a couple years difference, there's a huge difference in the place you are and the responsibilities that you have come the later 30s. And you just saw less of um, Issa daydreaming. You saw more of them at work, putting in work, making those decisions. I mean, we really haven't gotten into Lawrence yet, but I mean, uh, one of my favorite things about the Lawrence and Condola storyline <laughs> is how very real it is for folks who have jobs, they have commitments and they're trying to raise a child together and then figuring out what co-parenting looks like for them. So I thought, I definitely thought it was a homage, uh, it paid homage to what it's like to be in your 30s, like your early 30s and mid 30s, for sure. And I'm sure your late 30s, I'm not there yet, but I'm sure your late 30s are something completely different as well, like as you kind of move forward. But I just thought this was definitely a, a 30 something season, as opposed to before where they could have been 22. But this was definitely a 30 something season. <laughs> definitely because it was also less uh what going out and like because there was more of that in the first season um so it was just like you know we we don't go out well I don't even before this pandemic don't go out as much or I'm much more intentional and selective about where I go and when I go also who I'm going with um and so I feel like that was just a great reflection of that. That whole episode about the co-parenting and the just the fact that, you know, life is so different for the mom and the dad. Um, I can't personally relate, but I was definitely empathizing with both of them and just the imagining kind of the conversations that were had, you know, that we don't see, but imagine kind of thinking of like, where, did, how did we get from we were together, we broke up, oh, I'm pregnant to, I get a, te you te I'm texting you to say that I had the baby, <laughs> and then your family mean mugging me, and then just that whole 
kind of um, process of figuring out co-parenting in the beginning. It was just like, oh, I feel for them. But I loved how they still so, you know, the human, the humanity of both of them of like, there are areas where both could do something a little better. And there are areas where, you know, both are doing something right, but just like, hey, something's not working, something's got to give. So how do we figure this out? Which I kind of figured before that, you know, it's like, oh, sorry, you're going to have to move back. This, this, this isn't going to work. Plus, I need you to get back because I want you to somehow find, you and Issa to find your way back to each other. But for a little while, I was starting to think it was not going to happen because Nathan was just there all the time. I did want to say before we kind of move on from Lawrence and Condola, that was probably the best illustration of the difference of the workload between a mother and a father with a newborn child I think I've ever seen in my life. And nothing, and once again, they, they, um, like you said, they kept the humanity of Lawrence. It's not like Lawrence was just out there running the streets, not wanting to take care of his child. But in those, you know, beginning months, it really very much is all on mom. And I think it was really nice of them to uh, really kind of point that out, like the division, even if you were, you know, married or with someone, there still is way more of that workload physically and emotionally on one partner and I won't go and say it's one partner or the other all the time but traditionally it's not like a 50 50 split with that type of workload with that type of energy load and I thought they did a really nice job kind of painting that parallel um, for people I've never seen that done before it's always just kind of understood that the mom has to do most of the work and that's not in every you know not speaking for every kind of situation but um, they just did a really, really nice job. Like I, that was probably the first part in the, um, the first time in this season that I teared up because it was just, it was just so real and you don't traditionally see, um, that kind of, uh, illustration. It's always just either it's just mom and she's tired or, uh, you know, mom and dad are kind of like working, but you don't really see like the parallel, like this is what 11 o'clock looks like for you. This is what 11 o'clock looks like for me. And I really, I just thought that was, I thought that was super dope. Before we get out that episode, I also want to talk about how, I think for me personally, I'm single, I got no kids, how it debunked the myth of like how children get here and like the relationship that exists to make children. i will be honest, you know, I'm 30, whatever. And uh, <laughs> I'm 31, y'all. Oh. but anyways uh, <laughs> and I've always had you know this mindset that like that's whether a prince I'm trying to think of the best word children can be made from a place of love that doesn't mean you know your partner and it really showed how much like Lawrence and Condola didn't know anything about each other like they really didn't and now there's this kid here who they now have to take the time to know and love in, in, a, in a whole different way. And there's, a, there's an issue because like they don't know each other and how that happens and how it can happen. Like, I think for me, um, I've always just had this romantic notion that the love, you know, they had love, there was a love there. And we know Condola and Lawrence's relationship. I mean, they probably cared for each other, but I can't necessarily say that there was some like real deep love there that brought about and, and beautiful child that yes, you know, all that. But outside of that, um, it really debunked that myth for me because I think also like as a single woman when you're dating or as a single person and you're dating and you start dating a person that has a child or you're with a person that has a child, there's always this assumption that the relationship that they have with the other parent of the child is some like heady, lusty, you know, <laughs> kind of like, ooh, God, I can't wait till we get back together. And it's, and it's not, it's it, in a lot of, in a lot of instances and in a lot of situations, the reality of it is this child is here and we are doing our best to take care of this child together. 
but there's there's also awareness that knows that like that person may not be probably isn't my my long-term partner and it further debunked that myth for me because I also always assumed that maybe that recognition came after the baby was here but it was very clear with Condola and Lawrence that that recognition especially for Condola was there look at us saying Condola look at us not calling her different names look at her growth Yes. Yes. the last time we yes. was calling her everything but condola look at her calling her condola but yes condola very clearly knew i mean from just watching the the, the, the previous seasons that like he wasn't it for her but the child is still here and so like what do we do from that from that point on so i appreciated them breaking that down for me um because i as you had said Arma, i hadn't really seen it like that before um and the only other thing I want to add about that is like how important it is for me in my life when I'm dating to ask those questions. Like I have never asked no dude because I'm a cisgendered straight black woman. Um, I've never asked no dude like, you know, how do you feel about that? What do you think about that? Whatever, whatever. And, you know, I hate to be cliche, right? Because um, you know, people tell you like, think about whether you want to have a baby with that person every time you lay down with that person, and you be like, everybody got time for that. I'm trying to get what I came for, you know. Everybody <laughs> got time, but it's a little bit of like you said, Latavia. It's a little bit truth in that because, um, as you said, on it, it takes a lot of stepping up. It takes a lot of stepping up to be the mother, to be the father, to be the parent, to be the role model, to be the guardian. And if you're not ever asking those questions, like you can kind of end up, you can end up in a situation that is heavier for you than you, than you possibly ever thought. Not saying it's the right situation or the wrong situation, because I think um, everything is divinely ordered. So, you know, I'm, that, that's my perspective, but it really did show me in your 30s, like how, how things change. Like that stuff you used to do, put away childish things, not to do that on this podcast. But I think this whole season was just about putting away childish things and how um, much of a, a step that is in your 30s, how you can embrace it, but you can also wrestle with it at the same time. Because it's, it's, it's an evolutionary process that I think none of us, as much as they tell us, like, you're going to grow up and you're going to be an adult and this is what it means, like, none of us are ever really ready for it. It's, um, it's a wild, my 30s has been, I've only been 30 for what, two years, a year and some change, wildest time of my life. Craziest things happen every single day. Cannot prepare. Whoa, you know? And so I appreciated them for showing that and showing how, um, it's like, all oh, there's layers to it. There's aspects of it. I just, I really, really appreciate that because there's so many things I thought I knew. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing at all. Cool. As you could probably tell, we really, really enjoy the show Insecure and appreciate um, all that it is and everything that's been done. Um, but because of that, there's just so much to talk about, so much to unpack. So can't fit it all in one episode, but Thank you for listening. Remember that just as we have seen throughout this series of Insecure, and I'm sure you have seen in your own lives that it's all about the journey. So regardless of what it looks like or feels like, remember that it in the end, it is all good. Thank you for listening. And until next time.